In today's world, many of us are experiencing the aftermath of a proliferation of choice and options to choose from in almost all areas of life. Now, on the surface, this may seem great, right? I mean, isn't that what freedom is all about? More choice? Well, this is what psychologist and author Barry Schwartz describes as the official dogma, which is basically the idea that to increase our welfare and happiness, we need more freedom. And the way to create more freedom is to maximize the amount of choices that we have. Well, Schwartz also argues that this is completely incorrect in his book. That is also a topic that I think could not be more relevant for language learners today, the paradox of choice. So the paradox of choice hinges on two primary ideas. First, something called choice paralysis. The idea that beyond a certain point, the more choices and options that we have, the harder it becomes to choose anything at all. The second is this idea that the more choices we have to choose from, the less likely we are to actually be happy and satisfied with our eventual decision. It's so easy to second guess ourselves and imagine what if we had chosen one of the other options. Schwartz also points out how this tends to drastically raise our expectations. The idea that if there are so many things to choose from, then surely one of them must be the right choice. One of them is gonna perfectly satisfy our needs, which tends to lead to further dissatisfaction and disappointment. And there's one more psychological effect that I would like to mention here, which is that it turns out when we only have a couple of things to choose from, if things don't go well, we tend to essentially blame that lack of choice and we just accept it, right? It's not our fault, we just didn't have a good option. But what's really interesting is that when we have so many things to choose from, we actually tend to put a lot of pressure on ourselves now to make that perfect decision. And when we're not happy with the outcome, we suddenly shift the blame to ourselves. We think it's our fault for having not made the right choice. Now, there's no question that some choice is a very good thing. And it's just that Schwartz argues there is a line which after you cross it, more choice actually does more harm than good. And that those of us who are fortunate to live in developed societies are now bombarded with so many choices that have long passed that line in almost all areas of life. I believe the paradox of choice is really relevant to language learners in a whole variety of ways. So first of all, we are now in a time where for more and more languages that you might be learning, there are just so many options to choose from. It becomes very difficult even just to make basic choices about the resources you want to use. And once we do make a choice, we're constantly seeing all the different textbooks and apps and all kinds of websites and resources that we could have chosen. And so it's very easy to start doubting our choices and be tempted to constantly try new things. But something else I'd like to add to the discussion is that I believe the easier it is to change your decision, right? To try something else that you could have chosen before, the more debilitating this paralysis becomes. If you buy a car, and then you suddenly start second guessing yourself, it's not very easy to suddenly change your decision. But with language learning resources and tools and apps and websites, it's usually just a download or a click or a website or even a simple online purchase away and usually for a relatively cheap price. And so we often don't even think twice before suddenly trying something new. And this can lead very often to spinning our wheels for weeks or even months. Now, the second way it impacts language learners is just simply deciding what and how you want to study. On a daily basis, you might be confronted with decisions over, you know, do you want to study a textbook? Do you want to do flashcards? If so, which app would you use? Do you want to study with intensive or extensive reading? Do you want to do, you know, dictation or shadowing? And even then, what materials or content do you want to study? Do you want to use a TV show, a movie, a podcast, a graded reader, a novel, an abridged text, bilingual text? Do you want to use a particular website? Do you want to Focus on your listening, your reading, your speaking, your writing. And it's important to consider that even if you are somebody who 
typically does well at not always trying something new. You may still be investing a significant amount of time in those decisions to not do something as well. And finally, I would like to mention that language learning has an interesting thing which I like to call choice disparity, where for some languages, like French, for example, you may have an absolutely huge abundance of choice from <laughs> different content and resources and tools and apps. But if you're learning Icelandic or Cantonese, for example, then you may have significantly less choice. And this can also lead to further dissatisfaction and it can make videos like this just infuriating to watch. I'm sorry. Okay, so now we've talked about the different ways that this can impact language learners. Let's talk about some of my own action items that I think can help us to embrace the good things about all this choice that a lot of us have while hopefully mitigating those negative impacts of this paradox. So this first one may seem obvious, but it definitely bears reminding, which is that whenever you start to feel dissatisfied with your language learning resources, whatever you're doing right now in studying a language, it's really helpful to take a step back and think critically about why you're feeling that. Is it that this particular resource is just not working for you? It's just not compatible with the way that you like to learn? Or is it possible that you're simply experiencing the paradox of choice? You're simply doubting whether a different decision or a different app or textbook might be even better than the one you're currently using. I would say that if it is the first option and it genuinely is just not working for you, then you might definitely want to look into trying something new. But very often, it's the second one. We're just simply doubting, is there something even better out there? And in that case, I would suggest really sticking to your guns and just pushing through because the fact is that if it's working for you, you will get there. And although there might be a better option out there, you might be better off saving the immense amount of time we often sink into trying other things when we already have a perfectly good resource in our hands. Not to mention all the money you could save by not buying all kinds of different subscriptions and textbooks and everything else. Now, another thing you could try is simply time boxing your decisions. And I think this works really well for those day-to-day -day choices in terms of what do I wanna study today? Now, I do think it's great, honestly, just to have a broader plan so that you don't even have to decide that on a daily basis. But there's no question that sometimes you sit down and you're like, what do I wanna focus on today? I would say set yourself a five minute timer and whatever feels right at the end of that five minutes, do that. And the key here is don't allow yourself to change your decision afterwards. Just pick something because the reality is it probably doesn't really matter. If you're taking steps forward with your language, then that's already amazing. So time box your decision and just go with whatever feels right and never look back. And finally, this is one that has impacted me very recently, which is trust your past good decisions. A great example in language learning is if you find something that's working really well for you, right? It could be an app that you just really like their methodology, their design, right? It works for you. It could be a textbook. I would say trust that good decision. Once you've found something that works, don't risk it, right? Trust that. And if you start to learn a new language, and if that language happens to be available, right? With that thing you've already found, just pick that and just don't look back. I recently got back to Italian, and even though I have an app that I've been using for years and years and years for a number of languages, it works great for me, I was still tempted to try something new that everybody was talking about and that has quite a lot of hype in the community. And in the end, I spent like two or three weeks testing out this new thing that ultimately I just didn't really like anywhere near as much as my tried and true app that I've always used. And so I ultimately went back to that. And so I could have saved myself several weeks if I'd just gone with my previous good decision. 
Now, right before we get to the conclusion of this video, I'd like to tell you quickly that I just launched a brand new secret language podcast over on my Patreon page, where I also create a weekly language learning diary. I give advanced access to my videos and so much more. Hey everybody, I'm Robin McPherson and you're listening to my secret podcast exclusively available here on Patreon. I have to say episode one of the podcast was so much fun to film and create, and it was a really big hit with the group. So I can't wait to release episode two in the next week. And I just started collecting questions for October. So if you want to be a part of the podcast and ask your own questions, if you want tons more content or just to support my work, then it would mean the world to me. You go to patreon.com forward slash Robin McPherson. Obviously only if you can, only if you want to, but it really helps me a ton. So I just wanna say thank you to all of my supporters. So in conclusion, I wanna be really clear that I'm not saying it's a bad thing that we have all this choice, right? I think it's a wonderful thing that there are now so many ways to learn languages, whether it's the apps and tools that we have, or whether it's this sort of huge amount of sharing that's going on of different methods and ways to study. I think it's great, but I do think that I'm seeing so many people fall into this trap where they just constantly are doubting themselves, not sure they should try something new. And I think this spinning our wheels for weeks and months, it can really, really make a difference in how quickly you learn a language and ultimately how fulfilled you feel along the way. Because really we should be enjoying the process and not constantly wondering whether or not there's something better out there. So I hope this video was helpful in just simply making us more aware of this paradox and just helping us to have the tools and the knowledge to, like I said before, embrace all the good things about this abundance of choice that's increasing all the time. And I do hope that more and more languages will experience this wealth of choice, but also while mitigating the downsides. And like I said before, ultimately, I just want us to all be happier and more fulfilled language learners. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for your support. And if you enjoyed this video, I really suggest checking out my short documentary on the Language Learner's Guide to Minimalism, which I loved creating. It was so much fun. I think it's a great companion to this particular video. Bye everybody.